As part of our trigonometry, let's look at what's known as the angle of depression and the angle of elevation. Let's say the example. I'm sitting on top of the roof here and my line of sight is looking along this blue line until it hits the ground marked by the green line. I want to calculate the angle of depression. So in order to do that, I need to first of all imagine my line of sight looking off out into the horizon. So I'm following this gray line. I'm basically looking straight out the horizontal line. In order to calculate the angle of depression, it's the angle which is created by that horizontal line and this blue line, which is the line which is going down towards the ground. So that angle that I've created, let's call it A, that angle is now known as the angle of depression. Now, once we know that angle, there's a couple of things we can do with it. So if I'm looking at my picture here, I can easily find an equivalent angle to the same size as A. It's this angle marked inside the triangle down here. So I'm going to just put a little A dash on it. That angle is the same size because if you look at the picture, the ground is horizontal ground and my gray line up into the horizon is horizontal. So those two lines are parallel to each other. And when we have our parallel lines, you can see here this Z shape, which is creating two angles of equal size on either side of the Z. So that's our alternating angles. So there's an interior angle, which is the same as our angle of depression. Now, sometimes you might want to find this angle also, which is inside the triangle. So let's call it angle B. And we can calculate the size of angle B because we know that this angle here that I've highlighted in green is a 90 degree angle. So in order to get the size of B, I just go 90 degrees, subtract whatever the size of A was, and that will give me the size of B. So we can easily work out the size of the interior angles. And I'm assuming that the building here is creating a 90 degree angle. So that's what's known as my angle of depression. Let's now look at what's known as the angle of elevation. As you can see from the sketch, the angle of depression is going down. So it's going from the top of the building down to the ground. But the angle of elevation is the angle which is going up. So look at the airplane here, for instance, on my picture. I'm imagining once again that my line of sight from the top of the building is looking off out into, this, into the sky over to the airplane. So I'm just going to draw a line in red here to indicate my line of sight. So it looks something like that. Once again, remember that we have this uh, gray line which is going off out into the horizon. So I still have that line. The angle of elevation is the angle which is created by that horizontal line once again. But this time I'm going up. I'm going up to the red line which is staring off out to the airplane. And I'm going to call that angle C. And that angle C is what's known as the angle of elevation. And that's a quick guide on finding the angle of depression and the angle of elevation. So just try and remember, first thing you need is that yellow line here, which creates the horizon. And then if you go above it, you're creating the angle of elevation. And if you go down, you're creating the angle of depression.